Tea Party versus Agenda 21, saving the U.S. or just irking it. Now, uh, Mr. Joe Dugan had this to say, Agenda 21 is nothing short of treason. If you don't know what Agenda 21 is, you're not alone. Only about 15% of Americans do. And I think Rosa Corey said it best, and, and people say, people asked her, what is Agenda 21? She said, what is it? It's, uh, it's about your food, where you eat, your transportation. And to that extent, we have another and a great series of reports from Melissa Melton and Aaron Dykes explaining and exposing the corruption and cover-up that is Agenda 21. So let's take a look at that video now. I'm Melissa Melton here with Aaron Dykes for InfoWars Nightly News, where we're attending the third in a series of sustainable development meetings here in Central Texas. Concentrated, smart, balanced urban growth. That's, that's troubling to you. That's downtown Austin. And this is not downtown Austin. It's really up to you. It's your plan. It's your city. The small town rural feeling is going away. This is how Agenda 21 takes over a small town. For the purposes of the survey, go with your gut. However, we've given you a hard copy of the survey. This is a typical kind of um, push poll sort of meeting. It's based on the Texas Triangle uh, thing, where they're trying to increase density between Dallas and Houston and, and San Antonio, and Austin just happens to be in the middle of that. These plans were created by a stakeholder group, correct? Which plans? Plans that you guys are talking about here, the ones that you're bringing here. We're still in the process of trying to understand what people want in their towns, so there are no plans at this point. We have empty maps. We're not starting from sort of uh, an empty slate. We don't have a, you know, a single solution or agenda that we're trying to impose on everyone. You're telling planners how to lie to the people and how to lie to, to elected officials and how to manage people like us, how to shut us down. Ickley's local Agenda 21 planning guide laid out the formula for successful implementation of sustainable development schemes starting with a partnership and using a community-based issue analysis before putting the plan into action, then implementing and monitoring its subcomponents. Mari Strong, the leading voice behind the United Nations Agenda 21, endorsed the local Agenda 21 planning guide, calling upon local and regional municipalities to, quote, hit the trenches, saying of the many programs that have resulted from the Earth Summit, none is more promising or important than this one, which has hundreds of local authorities around the world now setting out and implementing their local Agenda 21s. The planning guide explains how the use of local and community terminology gives legitimacy to this implementation of sustainable development, all while the stakeholder group made up of local corporations and bureaucrats is given the real power. I'm here with Jeff Barton, and he's been kind enough to speak with us at the past two meetings, both in Hutto as well as in, where was the first one at, Elgin? Elgin. Well, I tracked down the local Agenda 21 planning handbook. The local Agenda 21 planning handbook, okay. Yes, sir. All right, looks interesting. Who puts it up? It was published with the United Nations Environmental Program, and it was okay. published with the ICLEI. That's an NGO for local Agenda 21 implementation. Okay, all right. I find it interesting they use a lot of the same buzz terms. For instance, they've got a glossary here of some of their sustainable development planning. They've got community meetings. They've got public hearings. They've got vision building. They've got workshops. And they've got specific outlines for how to approach the community, how to define and build the stakeholders groups. A lot of the same terminology we see in the Sustainable Places Project, you know, developed through the consortium with CAPCOG and the other groups. I don't feel like that's direction from the United Nations, you know, or from any nefarious group. But, you know, if that's the recommendation of the United Nations that you have a lot of community input, then it's one I would agree with. Well, I'm at the UT School of Architecture, and this has been the assignment to all the major architecture schools for years to figure out a way to push massive density into the cities and into the small towns that they've chosen. And this particular thing is nothing but a Campo-related deal. For more than 10 years, Campo and related entities have been pushing the larger sustainable development agenda as set out by the United Nations here in Central Texas. 1998, the Transportation Equity Act for the 21st Century, TEA 21, is enacted at a taxpayer cost of $218 billion for six years. The Smart Growth Initiative begins, and Austin, Texas hosts a National Development Conference. 1999, 
Central Texas Sustainability Indicators Project is launched. 2000, Capital Area Regional Transportation Planning Organization begins meeting. Transportation Excellence for the 21st Century, or TEX-21, implements T-21 regionally. 2001, Envision Central Texas, ECT, and the Center for Sustainable Development, CSD, at University of Texas, Austin, are both founded. 2002, Envision Central Texas holds its first public workshops and gathers community input in five Texas counties. 2005, the Capital Area Metropolitan Planning Organization, CAMPO, publishes its 2035 Regional Growth Concept Initiative. 2009, the Central Texas Green Print for Growth, a regional action plan for conservation and economic opportunity, is published by CAPCOG, the Trust for Public Land, and Envision Central Texas. 2010, the Capital Area Texas Sustainable Consortium receives a $3.7 million HUD grant and the Sustainable Places Project begins. 2011, Campo releases a growth monitoring report spanning 2006 to 2010. 2012, Obama signs the $118 billion MAP21, aka Moving Ahead for Progress in the 21st Century, to continue the TEA21 initiative. More recently, we've seen local communities pushing back across the map, rejecting HUD grants and refusing to participate in Agenda We've 21. Seen members of the community begin to ask their own questions and speak back and give their own spontaneous feedback, something we didn't see at the past meetings, and in some cases it was a heated exchange. I own guns. I don't think they're going to take them. We'll go back and catalog. Please, please don't take my comments negative. I, I support you 100%, but I want to make sure that, that what you deliver is something that's acceptable to they were actually standing up and interrupting their pre-scripted PowerPoint presentation with their clickers and their questions. I mean, we had one guy stand up and say, this isn't cool. You've got four questions coming up and all of the answers are bad. What do I do? I don't want any of these. So is there an option on these four <laughs> questions to vote none of the above? Otherwise, this community goes back with the idea that we want some of each of these four things in that area. It was really throwing them off. So um, how do we rush? What do we rush? What, what I would ask is to go ahead and note that and on the hard copy of the survey, we are collecting those. We are tagging. That's exactly what they're they're instructed to do. They're like, oh yeah, you write that on a post-it. We'll be sure and put it in the round file later. Yeah, but you're welcome just to grab a pen and a sticky note and give us ideas about things you'd like to see. Effectively. The people in here, by making multiple choice questions in a limited range of, of uh, options, have effectively endorsed some big effort to go build a high density community, basically so that they can go back with a manipulated set of data that says the people of that community want this. Well, we didn't have a choice. So to just give you a little bit of a rundown on how the keypad survey is going to work, um, all of the questions... Why are these people here? You know, why are they bring technology with them to kind of do this? I've seen in so many projects around Texas for, for any kind of development, huge amounts of money spent in the planning stage. Does this grant go to any actual physical development, or is it just planning? It's planning. The entire grant? Yes. Were you aware that the $3.7 million they were awarded for these grants doesn't go to any kind of actual development, it goes all in their pockets towards planning? I figured, and I didn't realize it was so much money. And how much is your firm getting from this grant money? Um, well, uh, we're subcontracted. I don't even know what the exact number is. Okay. It comes down to all the planners, and, and, and then our firm has a, a fraction of that. So it's a, it's a, it's a, it is a, a very small fraction of that. True. No discussion about um, who's, who's really going to make the decisions and what, um, uh, where the money is going to come from for doing this. And uh, we're kind of moving into the Hunger Games kind of a community situation, right, where we pack ourselves into little communities. And I've seen the, uh, uh, the maps that the, the UN and that the sustainable people put out with lots of little pinpoints around the map, uh, lots of open space, and uh, most of us here today live outside this community area, uh, own homes that have, uh, you know, I've had property here for 45 years. So we have property that uh, we like to be able to do with what we want. 
Tonight we've definitely seen a lot of outspoken community members who were not ready to just pick choice A, B, C, or D, but actually wanted to be able to speak out and say what they felt about these planning meetings that are coming here. Who are these anonymous groups driving this agenda who have the grant money? And you hear them wrapping up the meeting behind us, so we'll bring you more details on this report and future reports as they come along. They're planning our future with, it doesn't seem like it, a lot of input from us. For InfoWars Nightly News, I'm Melissa Melton. And I'm Aaron Dykes. Another in a great series of reports from Melissa Melton and Aaron Dykes exposing the cover-up of Agenda 21. And the people got a little feisty with them this time. They kind of, they know who they are now. So when they show up to these meetings, oh, they're, they're those are those InfoWars, ooh, those people who like truth. Ugh. So keep doing what you do, Melissa and Aaron. Visit InfoWars.com and PrisonPlanet.com. When you're on the site, you can also tune in 24 hours a day to my daily radio broadcast. There's also a free iPhone app to listen to the syndicated radio show when and where you want.